This interview is a part of the Oklahoma Historical Society's Oral History Program, Living Legends, Collection. This interview was originally conducted in the year 1972. We have no specific month or day mentioned. This interview was conducted by Mrs. Mary B. Roberts. The interviewee is Mr. William O. Gray, and that's capital G-R-A-Y, of Enid, Oklahoma. This material is being re-recorded on the 28th of May, 1986, for inclusion in the permanent collections of the Oral History Program by Judith Michener. Over. I see. Missed it on there. Uh, Mr. Mitchell. Mitchell. The MITCH Cheetah Royal. Our interview uh, today is in the Young Blood Hotel in Enid, and uh, the gentleman with whom we are talking is Mr. Gray. I'm going to let you give. I'm going to let him give you his name and the name of his parents. Mr. Gray. My name is W.O., known as Bill Gray. My father's name was James Nelson Gray. My mother's name was Marita Menser Gray, Menser being the maiden name. Right. And you were born in Kansas or Oklahoma? Born in Kansas on the 11th day of August, 1894. Uh, these Kansas people came, though, to be Okies. Uh, his father, I believe, was a uh, uh, trucker. My uh, father became acquainted with Oklahoma in 1875. He helped survey what is now, o what is now Tulsa and uh, working for the government as surveyor. And uh, his father died uh, on an army truck hauling freight from Fort Sill, Oklahoma, to uh, Leavenworth, Kansas. And my father came to Kansas in 1857 and settled in uh, Neosha County near the town of Burlington and Leroy on the Neosha River. And his father was died on one of the freighting trips and was brought home in a caisson. Is a... Uh, uh did your mother then come on to Oklahoma? No. My father and mother uh, were married in 1875, and father was surveying in the early part of the year, the first eight months of the year in Oklahoma for the government, and then married my mother in September the 30th, uh, 1875. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, your schooling then must have been mostly Oklahoma. My schooling was all in Kansas because I lived in Kansas oh. until 32 years ago. And when I moved down here, I was 45 years old. I went to school in the country schools, raised on a farm. Well, I just missed your age 20 years. That wasn't bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, sometimes nature's been kinder to some than others. But uh, I attended the grade schools in a farm in Coffee County. I attended uh, high school in Leroy, Kansas, which I drove back and forth six miles to go to school. And then I attended school in Lawrence, Kansas in 1911 and 12 and graduated from the School of Business. And then I went into uh, a job with the Oil and Gas Well Supply Company in 19 and 12, and worked for them for eight years, then going into the clothing business and working in that for another party and opened my own clothing store on the 16th day of November, 19 and 22. So this is my 50th year in the clothing business for myself. You have an anniversary then. That's right. And that's uh, all that time in Enid. No, in Enid, Enid. 32 years. 32 years in yes, Enid. I came here in... Uh, 41, the first day of February, your, 1941. Your store is right here on the square. Here it is in on Eden. the north side of the square in the number one location, right, right. next to Woolworths. Right. I have a 50-foot <laughs> front there. And, and we, the name of it? Gray's. We have 30 employees, and I go down to work every day and have 
managed the whole thing until it'll be two years in September. My son came back after being on the road 13 years and is now managing it, but I go down every day and work every morning when I'm in town. It seems incredible that you would have been here that long. <laughs> uh, tell us something about uh, your early impression of Enid when you first set the store up. Well, I was in business in Kansas and I had two stores at Independence in Arkansas at uh, Winfield in Arkansas City, Kansas. And a friend of mine, a salesman, came through and said, you ought to go down and see Enid, Oklahoma. There's an opening for a good store like you run down there. And I said, well, I've never been there. So there was a football game in which Kansas State was playing Oklahoma at Norman, and the salesman <laughs> took me to the football game, and we came back through Enid. Well, I was immediately sold on it, and that was in early October, and I came back down to check out the situation and found that there was a store, a building here for rent, the Herzberg building, who are early settlers here, and their son had died and the store was for sale. And I made a deal to buy their business, take it over, and uh, it ended up that they sold the merchandise to somebody else and I rented the building, which is on the east side of the square. And we have liked Enid very much my wife had said that you'll never be satisfied until you get to Enid, Oklahoma. And I said, well, I thought it was a great opportunity. And it has been very good to us. I have two other, I had two stores in Kansas until seven years ago, giving one of them to my daughter and selling uh, one to my partner that we had been partners for 22 years and left all of my interest here. I thought it was time that I stay in Enid and I've been very active in civic work. I've been president of the Chamber of Commerce, head of the, the uh, drive for a community chest and working in the chamber and uh, the retailers. And our store grew from sales the first year of about 48,000 to last year we did about 600,000. We started with three employees and we now have about 30 full time. We have continually remodeled and rebuilt our businesses here because we like the town, it was good to us, and there was a great future. Of course, the thing that attracted us to Eno was a marvelous trade territory in Northwest Oklahoma. There's no other place in the United States, I don't think, <coughs> that has the trade territory that this town has. and. At one time, 60% of all our business came outside of our county. At the present time, about 37% comes within the county and the rest outside, which is quite. And we have built, we believe, an institution in good ready-to-wear for men and women. We remodeled the store when we came here in 41. And again, after about eight years, 41, and in 46, no, which would be about, five years, we spent $65,000 remodeling somebody else's building in our store and put in a three-level selling floor instead of one. We were in there seven years and we moved to the north side of the square, which is now the Lowenhaupt, which was the Lowenhaupt store for many, many years and rented it there. And we have 50 by 150 feet with a second floor for selling. And Enid has been good to us and it has been good to work and live in Enid. Of course, one of the major projects in Enid to me has been the Oakwood Country Club, which I was president of the first two years and helped that's build it. A, that's a beautiful little club, I think. One of the prettiest for a town as small as Enid, you know. I think it's one of the prettiest ones I've seen anywhere. Well, I think it is, and it's quite unique. When I lived in Kansas, we built during the Depression a country club over there with uh, 30 men starting in with a small amount of money. And we conceived the idea here. Some said it couldn't be done, but we went out and in 30 days, you always have to have those. 30 days we had sold two, 102 memberships at $1,000 a piece. And we said when we got $100,000, uh, we were then we were gonna start. We sold 200 memberships at $1,000 a piece and 200 memberships at $250 a piece 
we got possession of the land on the first day of February in 46, 47, and uh, on the 4th of July of 47, we opened the swimming pool. On the 15th of March in 48, we opened the dining room in the clubhouse, and the first day of May, we opened the golf course. And while they were building the course, uh, for six months, I never was in my store <laughs> except before 8 in the morning and after 5 in the evening, I ran a crew of 50, 60 men. And our people there, our members came out and we had as many as 100 would come out on Sunday and weekends cutting trees and building and working. And that is the reason it's been successful. It's the first country club they said that was ever organized that we paid for the land, we paid for the building, we put up a $250,000 uh, clubhouse and everything was paid for. And the club never was in debt. That's for the amazing. first 20 years, it was in business, and it's only amazing. recently. And it, it is, and I own four and a half acres with a 300-foot frontage on the country club at the <laughs> present time, which I moved in 13 years ago this month, and we have an all-underground water system, and all of the trees were put out by us there, and we have a lovely home, uh -huh. and we wake up every morning. We look at the country club, and the thing that, that appeals to me about Enid is that it is a growth that is steady. When I came here, it was 28,000. Now it's someplace between 45 and 50,000. And it's every year has been, I would say, a good year because there has been no bad years. My son is associated with me in the well, business. Well, don't you think that's partly because Enid has more than one thing for its economy? Well, if one thing fails, it's got something else. Not, we there's don't. There's the Air Force Base, there's the oil. There's the agrarian interest in your wheat. There's the Champlain refinery. Yeah. There's Hackney f Iron and Fuel, you know. There's just so many varied industries. Yeah, all fail at once, and, you know. Uh, you know, we're all farmers here, whether we know it or not, because if they don't have a good crop, why, well, it certainly affects the business. Mm -hmm. And it is a rural community, even though it is a town of 45 or 50. I thought my son was going to Texas, for sure. He had done his residency down there and uh, intended to go back and complete his boards there. Yes. And I expected him fully to be in Texas. In fact, we were planning to move back to Texas when he did. That's so. It didn't happen that way. In well, the meantime, George Ross got him up here to Enid. Yes. And he spent three days in Enid. And he came back through Oklahoma City and he said, well, a doctor doesn't move. They would, wherever they decide, they stay put. And he said, I, I guess I'll be a needed from now on. Well, I think that he made a wise choice. My son came back. It'll be two years, the first day of September, taking a five-year contract for management of the store. I still sign checks and go down every day, but <laughs> let him do the worrying. And he had <laughs> been in Georgia the last four years, in Kansas City nine years before that. He came with us to Enid when we opened the store here. And he said, Dad, it's the only town in the United States that I would go into the retail business in. And I've been on a lot of them. So we, we love Enid. It's, it's home for us. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a good town. And you have so many diversifications. You have the university here, which is a fine asset and many things. And it's always a pleasure to give. I was chairman of the building committee of the first improvement was made in the Methodist Church here, which we now have about a two and a half million dollar investment. And uh, this was something, and always in the things in the country club, that probably is my major project in Enid. Not because I like to play golf, but because it was something I felt Enid needed, and I think it has been one of the fine assets, I think, the Methodist Church and all of the churches. And we Where did you get the idea for your windows in the Methodist Church? I think they are beautiful, well, but they certainly are original. Uh, a man in St. Louis designed those, and uh, we think that they're most unusual. There was quite a bit of discussion when we built the first unit, the what we call the educational part, and on the west of the old church, and now it joins the new, the two new main structures. Some of them wanted to put in brick, and I said, well, we don't want an ordinary church like everybody else's. Let's make it out of stone. And it ended up, we made it out of stone, and we think we have one of the most beautiful yeah, churches. I, I believe in the church, and a tither. In fact, I think a tither means more than 10% if you can afford it. 
And I think the church is one of the best investments I have ever made. Right. Well, um, can you tell us something about the way the square looked here in Enid? When you first came, what, what buildings were here then that are here now? Well, there is very few, I believe, without boasting that I can say that we were one of the first to put in a modern front and redo the interior of the building. We wasn't satisfied with the fixtures and the building we bought that somebody else had been successful in. And we were in that just about five years when we completely redone the building and tore out the whole inside and rebuilt it. And uh, then this was a good location, but when we had a chance to get on the north side of the square, which is the Lowenhout building, we went over to it, rented it, even though we had about four and a half years lease to run on the building we're in and all the investment. We went over there because it is the best location in the town. We paid three, four times as much rent as we paid in the other place, but it's been a good investment. Mm -hmm. And the buildings have changed. If you've noticed, the people who've been here 30 years, if they'd look at 30 years downtown Enid, the fronts in it, they wouldn't recognize there's very few I don't know whether there's any on the east, north, and west side of the square that were the same no, as when we came here. Uh -huh. No, they've all changed they've materially. All changed. And uh, while we did a major remodeling program when we went over on the north side of the square 16 years ago, five years ago, we made the back and everybody said it looked like a front of a store because we had parking lots there and we arranged for parking lots to give the customer free parking, which was a good investment. And then thought. three years later than that, or three, two years ago, we redid the front, which we think is the most unusual in the town. It has the marquee over it, you know, that comes out clear to the sidewalk on a 50-foot front. And we just love Enid. Enid and people tried to front. buy my home out there when we had been in it about two weeks and offered me $100,000 for it, and I said no. He said, well, would you take 125 I said, I wouldn't take any price. They're going to carry me out of it. This is sale. my home, and it is not for sale. That's, that's what you call growing roots, isn't it? That's right. That's why, because I love Enid, that I feel this way about it. While yeah. most of my people lived in Kansas, and my brothers and sisters and father and mother are all buried in Kansas. But well, we can tell that you're really an Oki, Mr. Gray. I'll I really tell you. <laughs> Yes, you are. By choice. By choice, that's yeah. right. And yeah. you've done a marvelous work here in Enid, and I know that the Enid people do th do think a lot of you. Well. I've uh, often heard your name mentioned in the trips that I'd make up here to see my son. We hope that we've given more to the community than we've taken out of it. Well, I think you have. I your, really do. Your son was my uh, uh, daughter's family's doctor. Was he? Yeah, they are. He is still is. Uh -huh. yes. Well, he's uh, after he took his boards and became the in the uh, National College of Surgeons, he's been trying to get into surgery as much as possible and yeah. quit the other. But you know, it's awful hard to switch. Once yeah, you become right. a GP, why, you're just about always a GP. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he loves it. He loves the family connections and likes to go into the homes and things like that. I think he really was intended for just a country doctor. Well, uh, that's <laughs> not a country doctor. We, ha we need those doctors. And you know, to be a success in life, it isn't how much money you make but it's how much you give to the community yeah, or yeah. to the other things. It's not what you make. The good man give us the ability to make it. That's right. It isn't. We can't take it with us, no. and we should make it and give it and it's good through. for other people. That's right. Well, Mr. Gray, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Nice to and see you, Mr. Robert. We're so glad to get you on tape. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over.